I'm Kat, and this video is to show you how to put different ends on your friendship bracelets. Um, now there are a few different methods, and what I also included in this video was how to do crimp beads like this one, so you could attach a little charm and a clasp on your friendship bracelets. There are a ton of different ways to start and finish your friendship bracelets, so I'm just going to show you a few of my favorites. So, first things first, say you've cut all your string, and you're ready to make your friendship bracelet. Now, I like putting a braid on each side of it because I think they're easy to tie and it's kind of cute and you end up with something like this. Yeah, really cute. So here's how you do that. You measure, I'd say roughly five inches of string, tie a knot at the five inch mark, and clip your knot into the clipboard and braid the short end. Then when you get to the end, tie a little knot. Ooh, that's a fancy knot. Okay. Then you're ready to start your bracelet. Another thing I wanted to show you is how to put little beads at the end of your tassels. So say so you finish your braid I cut the knot off of this one. You finished your braid. Now take a little bit of tacky glue. Tiny, tiny bit. And just run that over the ends of the string. You're trying to make a point on the end of the string to slip through the bead. Wait a couple seconds for that to dry. Then carefully put it through the bead. It helps if you wait longer than I just did, honestly. It'll take like 10 seconds to dry. You slip it onto the end of your bracelet. Tie a knot. And there's your little bead. Alright, so now that my bracelet is long enough, I am going to tie a knot at the end of my work. So that's tied, and then unclip it. Make sure everything is the right size. Now I'll clip it up higher here. Then once that looks like it's the same length as your other braid, you can either just tie a knot and finish it off, or in this case, I am going to add another bead to this end, so I'll take my tacky glue. Squeeze that through the ends and make a sharp point if possible. And let that dry for a few seconds. Now we'll take the other bead. And tie a knot at the end. Now if you don't like these ends to have the glue in them, just tie the knot a bit tighter and then trim off the piece that has the glue.
So now, and this is a teeny tiny bracelet, but I think it's cute. Now your bracelet's finished. And you have your little beads and tassels at the end. I think it's adorable. Super cute. Okay. And again, a lot of times you see a loop at one end and then a braid at the other. Um, I like this one. This is old, it's full of holes, but this one has a loop at this end. And then at this end, I put two braids instead. I think it's a lot easier for them to stay on that way. So you put one braid through the loop, somehow, and then you tie that onto the other braid. And it stays on a lot better than the one loop and one braid. You could also do two braids at one end and two braids at the other, and that's kind of like more just for decoration sake. You could tie one braid to one side, another to the other side. You know. And let me show you how to do this business. So you've got a loop on one end most of the time, and on this end I've put a bead that you slip through the loop and that secures it. Okay, so say you've got your loop at this end, you've just finished all your work and you've tied your knot. Now you want to put this bead at the other end. But the problem is you can glue all these ends together, but for the most part, it's gonna be really thick and hard to get through this bead, even if they are glued. So what I like to do that makes it a whole lot easier is take a piece of scrap thread. Actually, regular sewing thread works a bit better for this because most of the time it's stiffer, but make a loop with that. Put the loop through the bead. And make sure it's long enough to do this. So it's through your bead and you've got the loop on the opposite end. Now take all of the strings from the end of your bracelet, put them through the loop, and then pull the bead back over the strings. Voila. So now your bead is on there and you just tie a knot at this end. Well, you can tie a knot, but I'll show you what I like to do that's a little bit tidier. So once your bead is already on there, Separate your strings into three sections and braid them. Then tie a knot. And trim the excess. So now your bead has like a little bit of space to slide around and I think it's a little bit more interesting looking rather than this how I've got like this pom-pom on the end of it. So now you can slide the bead through the loop. And your bracelet's ready to wear. Okay, recap. So we've got the two braids, two braids and one loop. Loop and a button or a bead. Now we can do a loop and a button. You've got your button. Let's use this one. And you've got all these strings that need to go through the button. It's going to be really hard even if you put glue on it and shove them through here to keep them all from unraveling as they're on their way through. So find your extra piece of string again. Make a loop. Ooh. Put it through the hole in the button. And put all your strings through that loop. Now you've got the loop through the button and the strings through the loop. 
pull your string back through. Now you've got that all done. Again, I think it's a bit tidier to braid them up. And once you've braided that little piece, go ahead and tie another knot. Now you can tie a knot up here at the end just so the button doesn't fall off, kind of like you did with the bee. Or you can tie another knot down here by your original knot at the end of your work. And I think that looks a lot nicer. So once that's pulled tight, trim the excess. And your bracelet's ready. So you just slip your button through your loop and you're good to go. And now I'll show you how to use these lovely crimps. Um, so the best way to do this is to finish off your bracelet, or you could even turn any bracelet that you already have two braids on into one of these. You finish off your bracelet with a knot and a braid on both ends. Then take your tacky glue and figure out where you want your clasp to start. So I want mine to start right about here. So you can put your tacky glue on and then cut it. I don't like to muck up my scissors, so I cut it and then I put the tacky glue on. Smear a lot of the tacky glue in there. A lot of it. It should be tacky. Then once you've got your glue smeared all over the end there, can you even see that? Not really. Once you've got the glue smeared all over that end, you take your flat crimp and make sure that the top of your bracelet is gonna be where the back of your crimp goes. So it just looks smooth and finished. Now let me flip it over to show you. The thread should go just up to where the flaps end here, but not further, otherwise it'll be really messy looking. So you've got it resting in there. Now take your flat nose pliers, just like this. I don't have any perforations or ridges in this one, so it'll be nice and smooth. And bend one of the flaps in. I don't bend it completely in, most of the way like that. Then switch to the other side, being careful not to pull your string out of your crimp. And squish this side down. So now they're both about halfway in. I like to hold it by this loop at this point and just flatten it out completely. Squeeze it nice and hard and make sure that you get the entire crimp flattened out. So there's one side. Now let's do this one and I'll show you how to do it. It's you put the tacky glue on first. Just get it really glued. Now try and make it as symmetrical as possible because that's just going to make it prettier. See, it's a little more difficult to cut when you've got that glue in there. And then you have to clean your scissors off. 
So that's the back of my bracelet. I want to make sure I get the front up there. Place your threads inside the crimp. Flatten one side, about halfway. Now the other. And once it looks like they're both about halfway there, flatten them out. Now you don't have to use tacky glue, you can use, you know, your E6000, but um, I think it gets strings everywhere and it's kind of hard to work with. And personally, I hate those tubes, they keep oozing all the time. So I like the tacky glue. And it's worked fine for me so far. So now you've got your two crimps on there. And you want to add a clasp. So you'll need a jump ring for each end. And this is what the clasp is gonna grab onto. And my lobster clasp. So this is easier if you have two pairs of pliers. You grab your jump ring right next to the opening with one pair. Then with the other pair, you twist it open. This will save your nails. Now, as you can see, if I were to put a loop through this and then this, then my lobster clasp would always be sideways. So what I'm gonna do is put this jump ring on this one. Close it. And make sure you really close it because the ends of these loops on the crimps are flat. So if your jump ring isn't closed all the way, it'll slide right out and you'll lose your bracelet. Now open the second jump ring and attach your clasp. So now you've got a clasp on there. And on the other end, you can attach a little jump ring. I like the thicker ones personally because on this end, that's just what you're looping it into. Um, so you can do a length of chain or you can do a couple jump rings so you have a couple options for sizes to make your bracelet adjustable. And if you use the thicker jump rings on this side, then this little flat hoop is less likely to slide out of it. And what I find helpful is Closing the jump ring and then squeezing it a little bit this way, but not too hard, otherwise your ring will just collapse and you'll have to put a new one on. So that's your finished bracelet and you can attach a little charm to one of your jump rings and make it really cute or you can just wear it like this. It makes it easier to put them on and makes your jewelry look a little more finished, I suppose. And I think they're really fun.